The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 24th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, and you've got a question, go ahead and send me an email. Rifle that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a little bit of a mixed bag. That Dow is about ready to get negative. There we go. we got negative. The only thing trading the upside is the Dow transports are up about seven points. Dow is flat. S&P is off seven. NASDAQ 165 to the downside. Russell's off five. Semi's down 18. Gold's up four bucks. Silver 14 pennies. Lights Recruit is off a buck 87. Natural gas is off a penny. 30-year Treasury is up nearly one point. Trading out at 130.26 out there. Leading the charge dollar-wise to the upside. You've got L Elevin South up eight bucks. Al B. Morrow up eight bucks as well. That's about a 5% move there. Monolithic Power System, seven bucks, about 1.5%. HCE Healthcare, 2.5%, or about $7. To the downside, it is Mercado Libre off 26 bucks for Solar's down 11. HubSpot's down nine. Lamb Research is off eight. Shockwave Medical is down seven. We do have a question inside the Tiger's Den. Actually, let's do this here. Let's first, let me give you a feel for what's going on inside the equity market. So we'll get to the questions out here. We won't, we won't spend a ton of time because there's not a lot that has shifted. But there is one thing that has changed, and that is that the ES Mini at the moment is attempting to form a new profile. So those are the green. So the blue ones are the daily profiles. The green lines are the weekly profiles. And this is a pretty – this actually is a solid profile. This profile is forming. Now, the interesting thing about this profile, I want you to pay attention to where the prior weekly – profile levels are not necessarily the numbers i just want you to take a look at the bottom where my cursor is at around 39.99 the center around 40s 80 and the top is right around the uh, 42 40 ish area now take a look at the new profile the new profile is within the structure of the previous profile this is a message the message here from a profile standpoint is to expect and anticipate a consolidating market well, we've been in consolidating markets most certainly for the last uh, four days uh, with price consolidating with inside its daily profile out there. We do see until today, we did see a little series of, of lower highs out there. But now today you've got a higher high inside the ES mini. But right now, I'd say that price is just simply consolidating between 41.18 and 41.88. The benefit of understanding what's going on in the weekly time frame is this is signaling to an eye, specifically with regard to the ES mini, expect the consolidation pattern to continue out there. If we take a look at the other equity future contracts, uh, really not much to report here. Uh, however, we do know that in the case of the NQ, which is trading or has been trading above the top of its daily profile, that's at the um, 13062 level that we're trading below right now. 
but we have traded below for the last two sessions and price by day's end has made its move above that level. There's additional resistance right now at 13,348. So this A to B equals CD pattern that Stevie has drawn in here and it's still in effect that would take us up to 13,996. Price will have to close above 13. 348 to really trigger that uh, further signal to us. If you take a look at the Dow, I'd say the Dow is the most important uh, of the four equity future contracts to follow uh, to the downside. And that's because if we did get a close below 33,819, what it would signal to you and I is a change in trend. Right now, price is testing that level of support. It's tested it for the last three times. Maybe the fourth time is the uh, charm out there. But support holding 33,819. And of course, inside the Russell resistance holding, that's the top of its daily profile. 1810. Now there was a request inside the Tiger's Den from Roger. He wanted to take a look at the uh, ES Mini and the Dow for potential day trades out there. So let's go shift over to those charts. And here we've got uh, time frames as, as little as little as 10 minutes. I guess I have a five minute chart elsewhere. Here's a five minute chart, but I don't know what time frame it is that you use. Roger, and that's pretty important to try to answer your question with regard to a day trade. But as we take a look at the uh, five-minute time frame chart out here, I see a Rogemint indicator top and price holding support at its breakout level of 41.47. Is that a uh, is that the type of signal you want for a day trade? Mm, probably not. Um, you know, you'd rather see a pattern, but sometimes just getting back to the breakout level of support is the pattern. Same pattern here in the 10-minute chart. Big wide-ranging bar confirming a Rogemint indicator top and price finding support at that 41.47 level. Again, that's a TD nine count breakout area. On a 15-minute time frame chart, you've got wave number seven. Just following Basel, wave number seven. That's letter G. Oftentimes can be a top. Well, this most certainly was the case, and price now may be um, well, no bottom pattern there. No bottom pattern on the 30-minute uh, time frame out here. Our top, no, no, yeah, no bottom pattern out there on that. Topping pattern, sure. That's a uh, sell the D point out there. 60-minute chart, prices testing support. So right now, with regard to the ES Mini, and you asking me to try to help and identify a day trade for you, I don't see one. I do not see a high probability trade. And what you'd really like from a day trading standpoint, Rogers, you'd really like to see, we'll put up the Dow equity future contract as well. You'd really like to see for whatever the time frame it is that you're trading, you'd like to see at least three of the four, preferably four, all four, but at least three of the four giving you those same kind of pattern signals. Now the pattern signals, they're not showing up. Oh, geez. Sorry, Roger. I forgot to change. All right. That's Stevie. That's Stevie for you. We're going to, uh, I apologize, I, I've got the Dow equity future contracts up now, but we'll, I'll switch those back over to the uh, NQ. But let's just see inside the uh, Dow equity future contract, is there any kind of a uh, pattern that is out here that you could trade? So on the 10-minute chart, you can see a TD, well, you can see a momentum indicator top. Now, price here suggests that the Dow should pull back to 33,905, and that's its TD nine count breakout area of support. Um, I've got a... Uh, Probably a sell the D point pattern in the 15 minute chart and price dealing with support at the 33,944 level. The 30 minute time frame chart, mm, not really a pattern out there. I see price pulling back and testing support and price trading above the top of that profile. I would say as long as price holds 33,925, we could see a further rally inside the Dow equity future contract. Now, maybe first it wants to get to 33,905. That's a 10 minute chart out there. It can, it can get down there and it closed back above that 33,925. I'm looking at the 30 minute chart. That would be a bullish test out there if that were to unfold. But is there in the Dow equity future contract, do I see a really great signal out here for a bottom for something for you to trade and the answer is that i i don't i'll put the nq charts roger up on my screen right now during the break you'll be able to see that uh just watch the uh, streaming uh, charts out there steve rhodes with tfn we'll be right back Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60 minute webinar archive he just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30 day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So one of the questions that came in is from uh, Code Inside the Tiger's Den. He'd like to take a look at the, the, uh, the Tom DeMarc accounts for the uh, 10-year interest rate. And, and my apology, uh, Coda, I can't get that uh, symbol uh, working in my uh, Ninja Trader system uh, at the moment. So I'll, I'll see if I can get that figured out. And uh, perhaps tomorrow we'll be able to uh, take a look at it. But what I do have up on the uh, screen right now is the uh, 10-year uh, Treasury note. So we can take a look at this, and this is going to emulate. It's not going to be exactly the same, but it's going to emulate certainly the 10-year uh, interest rate. Now, what I can share with you here, I don't know, I didn't look at the 10-year uh, rate chart, but what I can share with you here is what we do have is a confirmed by the D point. So here's the A to B pattern out there. I'm just simply going to move that over to the C point. You can see this did more than a one-to-one. -one. A to B equals CD to downside. Here's your bullish reversal candle. That took place on April 20th, and that confirmed that by the D point bottom. Now what we have is we also have prices trading above the center of its bullish structured profile. And if price can close above uh, the uh, uh, that that level, um, sorry, uh, I'm just going to give you the exact uh, number so I don't have to do the mathematical conversion. So that level is 114.24. So if price close above 114.24 today, um, then we're trading at 114.30, that's going to signal either move up to its oscillator and change line, but more likely the 115.09 area, which is the actual top of its profile. Now, if price can close above that, that's going to tell us that the 10-year, uh, is broken out it would be bullish if it does that and would go retarget its recent highs so the opposite then coda would also be in the case we should see the 10-year uh, rate falling a bit it should continue to fall until we see the 30-year trail or the 10-year note i should say get up to that 115 09 area so that's what you know that's the complex i'll still do the best that i can to uh, get the uh, the 10-year uh, interest rate uh, feature working on my Ninja Trader charts out there. I, I know there's a way that I can do it, but then I have to shut everything basically down 
and use a different data feed, I think that might work. But I'll see if I can get this thing figured out for us uh, tomorrow. So hope that helps you out uh, as best. I know it didn't answer your question, but uh, was the best that Stevie could do. So no other requests at this moment in time, as much as I would love them. So uh, so let's do the following. What is going to be the following? Let's see. What is it that uh, we should try to take a look at? What things should we look at out here? So let's do this. Uh, since no request, let's uh, uh, take a look at. Let's take a look at market breadth. So let's get a feel for what's going on there. I'm on the white background charts out there. Uh, my seasonal charts, uh, that website is down. So Seasonex's website is down. I can't pull up any of that information. But let's just get a feel for where, where we're at. At 11.21 in the morning with regard to market breadth, as it pertains to uh, four different time frames, we can also get it for the 30-minute time frame as well. Uh, the four different time frames we're looking at here are weekly, daily, the 240-minute time frame, and the hourly time frame. And for the S&P 500, these conditions are all set to bullish. What I mean by that is when we take a look at market breadth from a profile standpoint, we want to understand how many instruments are trading above the top of a profile. When you close above or you trade above the top of a profile, that would be a bullish move. When you trade below the bottom of a profile, that would be a bearish move. As of 1121, 170 instruments are above the top of their 60-minute profile. 159 below the bottom of their 60-minute profile. That's the hourly time frame. The four-hour time frame, the data goes like this, 185 above, 134 below. On the daily time frame, it's 162 above, 108 below. On the weekly time frame, it's 138 above, 101 below. So Roger was right in wanting to be able to take a look at uh, some type of intraday trade. I would have to say here, what would be best is getting some kind of bottom pattern or signal on an intraday chart and then going to the up to, to the upside because most certainly market breadth here is bullish and there's no reason for the S&P 500 at least for those four time frames to continue to move higher. Let's take a look at the uh, let me pull this over. Let me get this going and let's take a look at the um, the 10 minute, the 10 minute, the 30 minute. I don't have a 10 minute. So as we take a look at the 30 minute charts out here what we have is here we do have a bearish crossover, 88 below, 88 above, 230 below. Um, so that's with regard to the uh, ES Mini. With regard to the NASDAQ 100, let's so, to switch over and take a look at those. On the NASDAQ 100, we're calculating 18 above, 49 below. So there's your bearishness is on that 30-minute chart. So what that tells us out here, Roger, is really focus on that 30-minute and I'd say the 30-minute and the 60-minute chart. So we'll pull those up for you just for the heck of it. Here, let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100. And here on the NASDAQ, you've got, again, bullish for all four time frames, meaning weekly, daily, 240, 60. On the 60-minute chart, it's 48 above, 24 below. So let's go pull up those 60 and those 30-minute uh, uh, time frames. It'll take just a moment to get those to pull up for us. And we're looking for patterns here, or at least I want to, uh, you know, direct you towards what to be watching for, if that's possible. So let's get the 30-minute equity future contracts out here first. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Bill, for all those. We'll uh, we'll pull those up or pull some of those up as soon as we're uh, done with this. So here on a 30-minute time frame, we look at the ES and the NQ. That's our focus. So on the NQ, price is pulling back into this. Uh, so on a 30-minute basis, pulling back into a swing point from back at 1030 in the morning to April 21st. The volume there were about 60, about 70,000 contracts. When we pulled back here, it was with 61,000 contracts on that last bar. This half hour right now, we've got six minutes to go. We're at 32,000. So you're pulling back into a swing point with lighter volume. So, Roger, the setup would be a test of that swing low, a test and rejection. And that swing low is 12,982.50. That's for the NQ out there for its 30 minute time frame. The ES Mini, it would be really a test of 41,3850. That would then uh, could be your trigger. Now, of course, you'd like to know if the 60 minute market breadth is also bullish at that time. This is the 30 minute we're looking at. I would expect I'd want to, the 30 minutes already bearish. So if price is going to move lower. That's not going to change. It would really be the 60 minute that you'd also be trying to cue off of here. Let's pull up those 60 minute charts to see what kind of signals or support areas might be there for Roger and anybody else to take a look at. So 60 minute. You're really kind of sitting at support right now. Oh, I take that back. There's a new profile. Yeah, you're sitting at support. So the bottom of the 60-minute profile is 41.45, caught 41.46, we're at 41.47. So 60 minutes sitting at support for the ES. I just wish that that 
30 minute could get down there test that swing point and then get the heck out of dodge out there on a uh, 60 minute chart for the nq uh, you're trading below the bottom of its profile. That profile level is 13.020. Now, this is going to be important to watch 13.020 and at 41.45 level, not at 11.25, but at uh, 11.59 uh, with uh, 59 seconds uh, to go out there to know whether or not price has held that area of support. So I think we still have to go back to the 30-minute time frame charts out there, look for some type of bottoming uh, pattern, and you just may not get it uh, today. So, um, so that's what I take. That's what we see. We take a look at market breadth that helps us out as well as. Uh, so don't get too overly bearish out here, right? You just took a look at that market breadth for the Nasdaq and the ESM. It doesn't mean you can't trade to both sides. And remember, we took a look at that weekly profile. The weekly profile is saying, get ready for a con for the sideways consolidating market and choppiness to continue. Uh, that typically will set up decent trades for the day trading standpoint. I just don't see them as we speak at the moment. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we've got uh, all the U.S. indices now trading to the downside. Dow's off 20, S&P 10, NASDAQ 190, Russell's down 8. We're taking a look at uh, Microsoft. This is for Mr. Bill inside the Tiger's Den. So we take a look at uh, Microsoft. It has this nice TD9 count top, but it's still in place out there. That formed on April the 6th. And uh, price has been consolidating sideways ever since that uh, took place out there. Right now, price is testing a swing point, Mr. Bill. That's a swing point from April 11th. There were 27 million shares that traded hands that day. So far, you are at 8 million shares. So it's coming in with about the same type of volume out there. I would say that if price did close below that low, which is 281.64, odds favor that Microsoft will make run for 272.05. If price can close the day back above 282.65, it's just continue, it's continuing sideways consolidation and in this in its case with inside profiles the weekly chart has resistance at uh, 292.30 let me see if that was the correct number 293.30 out there and in the case of the uh, weekly uh, the monthly time frame chart just a consolidation with inside a profile so not much to report there with regard to well not much to report other than that with regard to microsoft your second request was to take a look at that googly one and in the case of Google, this has a confirmed Rogeman to indicator top with price consolidating with inside its profile. So supports at 103.09 and resistance is up at 107.76. We have a new profile in the case of uh, Google, so not much different than we took a look at a new profile in the case, weekly profile in the case of the ES Mini. This new profile for Google is with inside the profile of the prior weekly profile. This message here is to expect and anticipate a consolidation pattern to continue. So again, we're getting signals here to expect a uh, very sideways, choppy-ish type of a uh, market out there. At least that's the weekly profile we looked at inside the ES. And now here when we take a look at the weekly profile on Google. We get that same kind of message out there. Uh, so Mr. Bill, I hope that that helps you out with regard to those two instruments. There were some other requests. So let me get to, to those. We could try to come back. I think there were one or two others that you wanted me to take a look at, although I don't have those listed down here right at the moment. But let's take a look at Apple. This is for Nancy inside the Tiger's Den. And, uh, and Nancy, with regard to Apple, um, it is back inside its daily profile. And price very well may be targeting the uh, support level, the support area. And it's a zone. And that zone resides between 160.32 and 161.41. That is your support zone out there. We're trading below last uh, Friday's uh, low out there. So that's a uh, bearish message. We're with inside the profile. No reason for price not to get back there. Well, the reason would be is because price on a weekly basis is just testing its descending trend line out there. And so when you break through a trend line, which Apple did, um, and I really probably should redraw this, don't we think? Did this one need to be redrawn? And not really, not necessarily. So Apple broke through its descending price channel. And the bullish test, when you do break through a price channel, to the upside or to the downside, this would be the bullish test. So you're breaking a descending price channel to the upside. Oftentimes, price will pull back and test that breakout error. Well, <clears throat> that, in essence, is what we have going on with regard to Apple right now. So we still have to go with that as a possibility. Still could get price lower and do that. And price could still get in at 161.41 level. They rejected and moved higher. In fact, the idea that Apple should move lower today, uh, if we look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here, what do we see? We do not see any kind of a bottoming pattern at the moment. Uh, if there were to be a bullish reversal candle, you could get it by the D-point pattern. But here you're below profile, you're below red oscillator and change line, you don't have a, a bottom signal, you negated a seventh wave move pattern out there. All that does suggest 161.42 could be a downside price target for Apple out there. So you got 161.42 on the 30 minute, 161.42 on the uh, daily time frame, And the weekly says, hey, I'm right now just pulling back to test my breakout area. And on the monthly chart, Nancy, you see the good old consolidation out there between 168.79 as resistance and then the lows 140.48. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Apple. And thank you so much for your request. John C. inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at Lightspeed Crude. I realized I was quoting an old price because I hadn't changed over the contract on my main screen. We have that fixed. And so let's get over to the Lightspeed Crude, which is the June contract that we're taking a look at. And uh, 
I think it was just to look at light sweet crude. So we take a look at light sweet crude out here. Um, let's just start with the daily time frame. Prices regained its daily profile, 78.02. A close back above that says, okay, I may be back to my bullish ways. The five hour time frame chart is in the process of confirming a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. This candle does not complete until 2 p.m. So tough to say at 11.34, this is what it's gonna look like at two, but 11.34 looks pretty good. You've got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom already been confirmed on the four hour time frame chart. Price is now above the top of its profile, which is at 78.23, John. That's a bullish signal as long as price closes above that at 2 p.m. And that'll then trigger the signal that price should go target the 80-70 level. That on the four-hour time frame is its four-hour TD9 count breakdown resistance level. The 120-minute uh, chart has a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom with 79.07 being the next battleground. So if you are long light sweet crude, you want to watch how price deals with 79.07. It may get up there, install, and pull back. That's your battleground on a two-hour time frame chart. The 60-minute chart says if I get through that battleground, then I want to make a move up to the 79.82 level out there. So that would be the next battleground, 79.82. And if you could clear that, then you're looking at that 80.70. So we're taking this in a step of progressions. And in the step of progressions, uh, I don't really have any kind of topping patterns here on the 30-minute chart. The 15-minute chart could, but does not have a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top. And I don't see any kind of a top on the 10-minute chart. So Lights Recruit is looking pretty good, John. And I would say that, um, what would Stevie say? Say you got to watch that 78.58 level out there. Because if you close above that, well, I'd say we're definitely headed higher. So I hope that helps you. Thanks so much for your request out there. Our next request is from... Um, Oh, it was Apple. So we got all of uh, Mr. Bill's, Microsoft, Google, and Apple, and all those are reporting this week. Apple usually reports on a Thursday. I don't know if that's the case this week or not, so I don't have the reporting dates out there. But uh, So we did cover Mr. Bill's request, so that's cool. So let's get to uh, the, the request from C C uh, CFLT. Oh, oh, it's from Ride the Wave. That's the requester. So let's go see if we can get there. That's Apple. That was Nancy's. And here we've got the CFLT. Let me get my other screens out here. CFLT, because I may be having a data feed issue. I don't know. So on the CFLT, it's straight down to 2268. And where my screen is showing 2245 out there, the white background screen. No problem. And CFLT is Confluent Inc. Well, Confluent Inc. is trading right now. It doesn't matter which price level. It's trading below the bottom of its uh, bullish structure daily profile out there. And so this is suggesting to you and I that what price wants to do probably is get back to 2145 to 2054. So 2054 to 2145. 2054 is the bottom of the weekly profile. 2145 is the uh, support from its oscillator and change line. If price were to close below 2054, that would be signaling that price wants to pull back to test that breakout level again at 1748. You're pulling back today, the volume on this move today. So this could be an A to B equals CD to the downside, most definitely. The B point, which would be the trading session from two days ago on April 20th, did volume of 3.3 million shares. You're already 1.1. So it does look like you're pulling back with some good volume. So in the case of this instrument here, let's draw on the A to B line. Actually, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it like this. That's your A to B. And what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and copy and paste. I'm going to try to copy and paste. I would copy and paste if I could grab. There we go. Now we can copy and paste. I can almost paste it. I can I can feel it. What happened there? Gracious. Okay. Well, what happens? We're going to go to a break, and then Stevie's going to figure out if he has the technique. He does not have the technique to cut and paste. But I'll figure out this A to B equals CD. Rest assured. We get back to this break. might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we can see that uh, CFLT has achieved the one-to-one -one price target area, wide-ranging bar. This is not where it'll end. But what you do want to do um, is uh, ride the wave, is watch for a bullish reversal candle. If you get that, that is then going to signal a buy the D point pattern. Or in this case, it could be a Gartley buy pattern. So I hope that that uh, helps you out. Uh, thanks so much for the request. Let's see. We took a look at oil. Let's go to Coca-Cola for Roger. Uh, KO is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's get that up on our screen out here. And uh, today is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count. Now, last time, Roger, this formed a TD9 count. It was on the trading day of, well, it, it confirmed the pattern on April 5th. It completed the pattern on April 6th. Price then will typically pull back and test the oscillator and change line. It, in fact, did that on the very next day on the 10th. That was a bullish test. A bullish test after you get a top, pull back, test a green oscillator and change line. That is a bullish test. And price also closed above the top of its profile. So this would suggest to me that we should see a similar operation. Now, what that means is that the TD9 count top should form between today and Wednesday. Typically, when you get to a confirmed bar number eight, which is what we have here at the moment, uh, we will see 90% of the time this will go on and complete a, a TD9 count top. So that's what I see on the daily time frame as price is hitting TD9 count breakdown resistance, 64.92. So odds, and, and on the monthly chart, price is hitting resistance at 64.28, uh, the top of its profile. The exact number on the profile is 64.22 out there. So Coca-Cola looks like it's getting set up for at least a short-term top, maybe just pulling back to that oscillator and change line. That's what I see when I take a look at the charts there, Roger. I hope that that helps you out, and thank you so much for your request. The next one coming in from uh, Doji inside the Tiger's Den. And Doji wants to take a look at ticker symbol INVH. And INVH is trading at about 32.88 with a TD9 count top that took place on Friday. Now, there is a new profile that is forming out here. You do not see it on my white background charts. It hasn't picked up on it yet. But that profile number is 32.60. Turns out at 32.56 is the oscillator and change line. So what I would say, Doji, is price should pull back and test that level. Now, 
like in the last instrument that we took a look at. If price tests and rejects that uh, green oscillator and change line, that will give you your bullish signal. Now, it would really be a neutral pattern because price has to close above Friday's high, the TD9 count top, in order to really get to a full-out bullish message. So right now, INVH, and it's uh, you found resistance at the top of its weekly profile, at the center of its monthly profile. So yeah, pull back to at least test support. And on a 30-minute time frame chart out here for INVH, we don't have any kind of a bottom signal. So this is suggesting that price should, in fact, pull back. You could get a, a TD9 count bottom uh, by uh, late afternoon in this instrument. So I hope that that helps you out. Doji, you also wanted to take a look at SPG. So let's flip over to the SPG charts out here, see what they're seeing. That is the Simon Property Group. The Simon Property Group right now trading out at about 109.17. And it is likely targeting at least the 108.40 level. 108.40 is the red oscillator and change line. Doji, if price closes below a red oscillator and change line, those communicate to you and I we have bearish conditions because that then tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. And should we get that, that would be a close below 108.40. Now that's going to move by a few pennies or so. So call it 108.35. That would then signal price moving back to test the next area of support. And that would be at 105.51. We don't have that signal just yet, but that's what you would want to anticipate for Simon Property Group. Now, Simon Property Group, this will be day number three of consecutive lower closes, or it appears that it will be. Um, so they typically get a two three or four bar knee jerk reaction type low out there so i would expect that simon property group will form some type of short-term bottom either today or tomorrow we don't see it on the short-term charts just yet but that is something you should be paying attention to and take a look at dan inside the tigers then wants to take a look at natural gas he says hey stevie i think that's going to four bucks and more out there so let's take a look at the natural gas charts out here and here we take a look at the june chart and what we like about the uh, june chart is uh we like about the daily time frame is that we've got that nice roads momentum indicator bottom out here with price just consolidating with inside that uh, daily profile dan before price gets up to four it's got to take out 255, at least on the June contract that has to do that. That is the top of its profile. Now, it's possible that this is just set up the beginning of an A to B equals CD to the upside. That we won't know until price could close above the top of that profile. But if it did, and let's just move that A to B line up here to the C line, that would only get us into that 270-ish type area. But we don't have that pattern as we speak just yet, but we do have a nice bottoming pattern on the daily time frame. On the weekly time frame, what we need out here is price to close above its oscillator and change line. That oscillator and change line, Dan, is at 248. If price can do that, then 274 would be in the cards out there. On a uh, intraday basis, I don't really have a whole lot here to uh, focus in on. Of course, what we all want to do, or at least I believe we all want to do, and that is find somewhere to enter a long position inside the natural gas. That's based upon the fact that we now have a TD9 count yearly count that is in place out here and uh, so we're just looking for signals on the uh, daily well we got that but the weekly and the uh, monthly time frame as well we don't have that on the monthly time frame unfortunately so dan i do believe we've got a bottom out here or it appears that we have that uh, bottom we need resistance levels to fail which has been a tough thing for natural gas to uh, struggle through so i hope that that helps you out at least with regard to my interpretation and uh, thanks so much for your request the next request Coming in from David H. And David wants to take a look at uh, LRCX. So I think I've got to go back to my beginning out here. We'll punch in that uh, symbol, LRCX. We'll let this uh, populate. And, uh, and then we'll be able to answer his question, which I don't know what it is, but it is on my phone. So let's go check out the email request out here. And David writes in. He says, hey, Steve, can you give me your charts perspective on LAM research? You've got the calls expired on 5.5. Yeah, I can. I just have to type in the correct symbol, LRC. LRCX. LRCX. All right, it's uh, coming up. And uh, this is LAM Research. And LAM Research, right now, it is so it's really trading out at 508. 15 and 50815 is below that green oscillator and change line. My system is showing 50970, my, my white background system. So let's go with the uh, correct data. If price closed below 50892, let me open up this daily chart, see if there's anything else. So just a sideways move. I don't have a reason to think that the sideways consolidation wouldn't continue for LAM research. And if price does close below that oscillator and change line, that would be the signal. Uh, and that oscillator change line again is at 50894. 
Um, we're at 508.15. So the next level of support out here, David H., is going to be 497.17. That's what the daily chart says. If price can get below that, 487.68, and below that, 478.19. And that would be towards the bottom of the consolidation. You want to watch, if price does that, how price is moving into that March 13th candle that did 491,000 shares. So that's the daily time frame for Lamb Research. The weekly time frame consolidating with inside its profile between 526.48 resistance, 473.64 support. Same kind of situation in the monthly chart. A nice TD9 count bottom. Price dealing with uh, its oscillator and change on as a resistance level and at the center of its uh, profile out there. So I think Lamb Research, watch that daily oscillator and change line. A close blow is going to signal lower price out here. I'm still at the wrong price on the 30-minute time frame. Try to wish that weren't the case. This still shows me at 12 noon. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a delay out here. But what we don't have is any kind well, we have is price pulled back. After forming that TD9 count top, it did pull back to breakout support of 508.11. So it's possible what you're going to see here is, in fact, a bounce. That could take us on the daily time frame back above that 509 level. And if it does that, well... And we don't have a message that price would move lower to 497.17. So, David H., I do hope that helps you out. Thanks much for re the request out there. We'll take a look at Rio Tinto for Thomas from a short standpoint and a few. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So the question from Thomas is, is Rio Tinto, R-I-O, is it a short? And Thomas, our answer would be no, it's actually a long. What you got on Friday, so you had here, here's the problem with Friday's candle. 
Friday was a big gap to the downside. There was good volume behind that move. Volume behind that move was about uh, 4.3 million shares. So it formed both a falling window, gap to the downside, and a bullish hammer candle. Which one is it? Well, I'm going to go with the bullish hammer candle. The reason I'm going with the bullish hammer candle is when I look back to the left, I've got a TD9 count bottom. That TD9 count bottom uh, confirmed on March the 17th. Price test that swing. Now, test that swing point with volume. That swing point had volume. Oh, it was lighter volume. No, is that true? There was nine. Yeah, 9.6 million was tested with 6.6. .6. So you test that swing point, let alone it was a TD9 count. You did a lighter volume, rejected it. And you formed a bullish hammer candle. So it looks like what uh, Tinto, Rio, Tinto wants to do is move up towards its 6678 level. I'm not using that as the exact target, but that's its oscillator and change line. Move up towards that level. The monthly chart shows price pulling back to support at 63.64. Now, if price closed 63.84, if price closed below the bottom of that hammer candle, that's low from Friday out there. That low is at 63.75. Then the answer would be yes. Then, then you'd have at least a short signal out there and that short signal would say okay price should get down to 60 40 uh, 60 61 when we look at the monthly chart price had closed above the top of that monthly profile for more than two consecutive sessions so a retracement or pullback should find a counter trend move to the downside should find support at 60 61 so hope that helps you out we had a request to take a look at nordic american tankers out there nordic american tankers moving into a swing point that had volume of 2.9 million shares, and so far you're at 2.1. So it should at least go test the top of that. That's at the uh, 394 level, and if price gets above that, 411 is on the cards for Nordic American tankers. If we take a look at the uh, next request here, DKS. Dick Sporting Goods, I believe that's what DKS is. Uh, it's moving higher. Bar number seven today, you want a profile resistance? You don't have any profile resistance. Profile support on the daily is 146.62. 145.08 is also support. 144.29 is another support level for Dick Sporty Goods. Folks, stay tuned for great programming. I'll see you on Terrific Tuesday. You please have a marvelous, magnificent Monday. Take care.